Three times Randolph Carter dreamed of the marvelous city, and three times was he snatched away while still he paused on the high terrace above it. All golden and lovely it blazed in the sunset, with walls, temples, colonnades, and arch bridges of vein marble, silver basin fountains of prismatic spray in broad squares and perfumed gardens, and wide streets marching between delicate trees and blossom-laden urns and ivory statues in gleaming rows, while on steep northward slopes climbed tiers of red roofs and old pink gables harboring little lanes of grassy cobbles. It was a fever of the gods, a fanfare of supernal trumpets, and a clash of immortal symbols. Mystery hung about it as clouds about a fabulous unvisited mountain. And as Carter stood breathless and expectant on that balustrated parapet, there swept up in him the poignancy and suspense of almost vanished memory, the pain of lost things, and the maddening need to place again what once had been an awesome and momentous place. He knew that for him its meaning must once have been supreme, though in what cycle or incarnation he had known it, or whether in dream or in waking, he could not tell. Vaguely, it called up glimpses of a far-forgotten first youth, when wonder and pleasure lay in all the mystery of days, and dawn and dusk alike strode forth prophetic in the eager sound of lutes and song, unclosing fiery gates toward further and surprising marvels. But each night, as he stood on that high marble terrace with the curious urns and carven rail, and looked off over that hushed sunset city of beauty and unearthly eminence, he felt the bondage of dreams tyrannous gods. For in no wise could he leave that lofty spot, or descend the wide marmoreal flights flung endlessly down to where those streets of elder witchery lay outspread, beckoning. 